Hello everyone. Good evening. Good morning. Whatever. Whenever you are watching this video. Today I am going to deliver a short lecture, a brief lecture on William Blake's The Chimney Sweeper, The Songs of Innocent Person. And before I indulge in the text, of course I will analyze the text in detail and also analyze the themes in connection with the text. I would also like to discuss about the context of the text about Blake as a poet, as an artist, as a visionary, as a mystic artist. Because all these things could not be separated from his poetry. We know that Blake had a unique vision of the world, of the society, of the religion, of the myth. In fact, he had his own myth, had his own re religious belief, had his own vision of the world, for the world, for a better future, for a better world. Perhaps some of his ideas which are expressed uh, in some of his paintings. He was also a great painter, by the way. Some of his painting would uh, reveal him not just a simple artist or a painter, but as a mystic figure, as a mystic artist. And that's why <laughs> in during 19th century people considered him or the intellectuals in London considered him to be mad or lunatic but a survey done in 2002 by British Broadcasting Corporation that is BBC about the hundred greatest Britons it was found that Blake was among the first 50 figures. So it shows how great Blake was as an artist, as a visionary, as a poet. So we are going to today analyze his poetry, one poem, one text, that is the chimney sweeper, which is taken from his Songs of Innocence. We know he had a dual vision of the world of the society, the songs of innocence and songs of experience. That's how he perceived the world, the society, in terms of this paradox of innocence and experience. He considers, he considered that these two paradoxical forces, that is innocence and experience, both are required. And in fact, a synthesis, a perfect synthesis is required within the heart, within the soul of human being to create a perfect society, a free liberal society, not just for the children, not just for the human beings, but for all the animals, all the beings of the world. So he had such a profound vision uh, as an artist that uh, we often get overawed by stature as, a, as an artist, as a mystic figure and also as a literary figure. But before we but before we go on with our lecture, first as a part of this e-content structure, we have to set our learning objectives first. Of course, we would discuss this topic, this poem, in terms of Blake as a romantic figure, also Blake as an artist, as a visionary figure, Blake's concern about contemporary society, that is 19th century English society, and Blake's perception of the world in terms of innocence and experience, that's what we were speaking actually, that he perceived the world as a paradox. And in order to solve the problem of the society, he 
put forward this vision, this paradox, vision of paradox of innocence and experience. And of course, which is our main aim in this lesson is to have a detailed analysis of chimney sweeper, that is the songs are taken from the songs of uh, innocence. Now, as I said, before I go on uh, with the text, detailed analysis of the text, we have to see that Blake was actually a great artist. His works are both philosophical and mystical. As an artist, he was a mystic figure with all his paintings expressed, revealed his vision, vision of erosion, vision of the creative forces of the world, the creative and rational forces of the world, how they clash each other. And he considered that our creative forces are continuously and continually being crushed by the rational forces. And he, in his book, uh, on his visionary books, on his visions about heroism, Zohar's book of four Zohar's, he put forward his idea of these rational forces, creative forces of human being. And he considered, he believed, he intensely believed in his ideas and his vision that if human beings want to create a better future, a better society, more and more they need to emphasize the creative forces within themselves and they had to balance their creative forces with the rational forces but what we find is that the material existence is gradually crushing over the creative existence and that's what is tragic about this world that's what brings all the material complexity in this world in this text uh, uh, in many paintings, we'll find that how society is oppressed, depressed, haunted, humiliated, crushed and corrupted, diseased by this material existence. And this material existence is actually the wrong direction that human society is driving forward. This is not a driving forward. This is actually a backward movement. So. He's very conscious about the society, about the progress of the society, movement of the society. Now, as an artist, Blake is of course a romantic. As a romantic, he uses symbols, he uses imageries, he uses his own imagination, he uses his own mysticism, he has intense sympathy, love for childhood, for simplicity, for naturality for subjective expression and of course for freedom and of course an ideal vision of the society now Blake where we discuss this text particularly chimney sweeper when he discussed chimney sweeper uh, uh, when my mother died I was very young this is the first line of this text we'll see and we'll try to put evidence of whatever I have said, whatever we have discussed, Blake as a romantic poet, Blake as a social uh, poet, Blake as a visionary poet, we'll discuss all these things in terms of this text. Of course, without uh, substantiating our answer, our discussion with, without reference to the text, I feel particularly that any uh, discussion is fruitless if you don't relate uh, your discussion uh, with, to the text concerned. Okay, now, of course, we'll return to the text at the end, but what we find in Chimney Sweeper, we know that Chimney Sweeper uh, is actually a phenomenon of 17th, 18th century, 19th century Europe. Uh, in most of the cold uh, uh, countries, in most of the northern European countries, European countries of Germany, like Germany, uh, England, we find there are a lot of chimneys being used uh, for household uh, warmth because of the cold temperature because of the low temperature now these chimneys uh, required cleaning sweeping and there were there grew, grew number of is uh, class of its own 
from the backward underprivileged class and most of the time young orphans boys were appointed were employed by the master sweeps by the adults to earn cheap money through them by exploiting their uh, exploiting their childhood their innocence and uh, this thing should be discussed not only just as a child labor as a problem of child labor during 18th and 19th century uh, in english society but this text should be judged should be studied in terms of uh, christian christianity faith in christianity the so the society the material society especially the problem of child labor and of course the material complexity of the society so everything must come into our discussion of the text so let's see how uh blake explores this context this social context of child labor of the chimney sweepers uh being used by blake in this text as a text so that he should criticize and he should put forward his own vision about childhood about innocence about society and what he thinks about uh, religion of course in this respect now let's uh, move on to the main concern of our text that is the detailed analysis of the text itself let's first read the text then i will analyze it when my mother died i was very young and my father sold me while yet my tongue could scarcely cry we 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 notice the use of assonance here epithesis epithesis and assonance both contribute actually to the brutality towards the children brutality towards the innocent children now who is the speaker of course the speaker is first person speaker of course uh, it seems to be an autobiographical account of the sweeper himself he says that autobiographically that when our mother had died his mother had died he was very young and his father sold him while yet my tongue could scarcely cry so weep 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 how ironic is that weep itself refers to not just the act of crying weep also refers to the sound the trait cry the litany is the use uh, actually uh, in the cold morning early morning they had to go out onto the streets to cry sweep 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 actually but uh, their child like tongue could hardly pronounce that and they could say it just only pip 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 but it sounds both sweep 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 and both weep 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 so the weep it's kind of pun on sweeping and also a kind of crying so the chimney sweeper says that i was very young when my father sold me now why did of course it ref he belonged to a class belonged to a society that his father couldn't afford him rearing upbringing with providing food sustenance and education so it shows the condition of the society at that time that if even the father was forced to sell their children their young children for some little money in exchange of little money so your chimneys i sweep and i in suit i sleep how tragic the conviction is that he realizes that because of the death unfortunate death of his mother at a young age who should have taken care of him and the cruelty and also perhaps the economic compulsion of his father and because of these factors that existed in the society he was sold he was sold into this profession of sweeping and now it refers to the past now it refers to the present and at present what he is doing he is just sweeping and sleep he has to sleep in the suit 
And now it refers to uh, some kind of uh, phenomenon or, narrates or narratives or reports that sometimes these young children felt so tired while sweeping uh, the chimneys that they uh, immediately uh, fell asleep. Sometimes they get unconscious. So it's not the sleep perhaps due to the suffocation of the suit they perhaps uh, uh, fell unconscious there. So it refers to their humiliating condition, it refers to the suffering and misery of the young speaker, young chimney sweeper. Now he refers to another one, another character. His name is Tom Deka. There is little Tom Deka who cried when his head that's curled like a lamb's back was shaved. So I said, hush Tom, stop Tom, don't cry, never mind it. For when your head is bare, you know that the suit cannot spoil your white hair. Now, of course, sometimes uh, it was found that even the orphan white children, not only the black children, uh, Negro children, they were forced into this profession. So Tom Deca, it's the narrative shifts to another character, Tom Deca in third person, who cried when his head. So it refers to the shaving of the young uh, chimney sweeper. Now the ch as a custom, their head they sh was shaved so that uh, to, they had to prevent the lice prevent the dart being deposited there. So that's why it was a custom that their head was shaved. Now, uh, now this Tom Deca cried when his head was shaved. Now this symbolic act of shaving may also refer to, we know that Blake uses a lot of symbols in his text. So this could symbolize the loss of innos loss of innocence of the child, loss of the simplicity of the child, and he was forced into a complex material profession, hard, brutal profession, which the society expects from them. So his curl. So when he cried, his head that curl like a lamb's back. He was compared to the lamb. We know that lamb for Blake is a symbol of innocence, and also it forms the trinity of God that is God the Lamb or the Holy Ghost God the Father and of course God the Son that is Jesus Christ so Lamb is also part of the divinity Holy Trinity and divinity but Tom Decker has to shade that identity has to shave away that identity and when he was crying the speaker, the first person speaker, that is who begins the narration of this text, said, consoled him, Tom, don't cry, don't mind it, for when your head is bare, when you know that the suit cannot spoil your white hair. Now, in a simple childlike way, the speaker, the chimney sweeper, that is the first speaker, consoles and also in a kind of sympathizes with Tom. Who is another chimney sweeper? But we find that the first speaker is also in misery. Maybe little advanced in experience. He is trying to console the newcomer Tom, who is going to be introduced in this profession. So one who is suffering the same misery is also comforting, consoling the other one, the second, that is Tom, for not worrying. But he himself actually worries about his existence, worries about his future, worries about his life. And he says that comes, that worry comes from the line. That's why I sleep in suit. This is not a celebration. This is not a cheerful expression. In fact, he expresses his misery. So the same character, uh, when trying to console another character in misery, we find how tragic it is that two children trying to pacify each, each other, both are in the same miserable condition which the society demands from them. Now move on to the next section. And so he was quiet and that very night, as Tom was sleeping, he had such a sight. Such a sight means he had a vision. 
what vision did he have did he have that thousands of sweepers of course this refers to the dream this dream is also symbolic in this uh, text we analyze what these dreams symbolize and signify let's see first what Tom sees in his dream thousands of sweepers like D, Joe, Ned and Jack were all of them locked up in coffins of black this black coffin so this black coffin symbolizes the material complexity of the society the harsh reality of the society within which they are confined the existence the situation they are in and the coffin is black why it could symbolize death it could symbolize the evil life disease life they are leading miserable life they are leading they are forced to live and it could symbolize the black suit of the chimneys because they in all their life throughout their life they feel and see they could imagine is the black chimney inside of the black chimney so inside of the black chimney is like a black coffin for them and by came an angel this is the same dream continuing by came an angel who had a bright key and he opened the coffins and set them all free notice the assonance effect of assonance and diphthongs these diphthongs allow them a kind of freedom a kind of hope for freedom so the we so far the poem is very has been very pessimistic but now we have optimistic vision through this dream an angel came and with a bright key he opened the coffins and set them all free then down a green plain leaping laughing they run they run down a green plain and they celebrate their life there freely on that green plain this green not only express their youth but also express their innocence and the pastoral landscape that god created for all the human beings so they play on that plain leaping laughing thereon and wash in a river and shine in the sun so for the first time they enjoy their life of course through a dream so the dream of course symbolizes their freedom their revival and their union with the angel and this who could this angel of course this angel could be could refer to christ the redeemer christ who salvaged human beings but we know in the reality that christ couldn't salvage them even after christ arrived or not they're still suffering they're still suffering the same miserable condition that the society put them on forced them upon now they're naked and white all their bags left behind we know that these children had kind of bags with their equipment of brooms sticks clothes uh, to clean the chimney so these bags symbolize of course the burden the burden of chimney sweeping and they leave that behind and the nakedness the whiteness of the children actually refer to their return and restoration of innocence the pristine innocence to which they were uh, restored by that angel they rise up on clouds suddenly they ascend to the clouds just like christ did and sport in the wind they play up in the wind and the angel told Tom if he had if he would be a good boy if you'd be a good boy you'd have God for his father and never want joy no this is what this is where Blake is criticizing the faith in Christianity the faith in religion why notice one the angel through his dream tried to pacify him tried to be be content with his condition and he asks him to be a good boy he advises him to be a good boy the angel asked him to be a good boy good boy in what sense good boy in the sense that he should follow his performance as a chimney sweeper he should not protest he should not reject this miserable life we know Blake as a visionary wanted that all the human beings should reject the miserable conditions of life 
and accept the liberal, free, creative aspects of life. But here, the God is advising the children to accept the humiliation. And he offers him what in exchange of that content? He offers him joy. The question is, how could he have joy if he suffered so much? If he's, he would behave as a good boy and follows the master sweep and follows the instructions of the master sweep and follows that kind of life, how could he have joy? So, of course, this advice is actually given by the church itself. The church, although whatever suffering, whatever corruption we have in the society, the church asks us to be satisfied with our own life, to be satisfied with the society, to be satisfied with the condition. But if the condition is artificial, if the condition is made by human beings, if the conditions are corrupted by human beings, should he not protest? This is the basic question. This is the basic satire against the faith, the simple faith in religion. Blake is actually combining both the simple conviction in religion and also a doubtful, he is slightly doubtful about the religious faith also. So, and so Tom awake. And we rose. So, th this is where the dream ends. So, the dream which began as a hope, began as a hope for freedom of all the chimney sweepers, including the first speaker, including Tom, including other sweepers like D, Joe, Noel, Nate, Jack, everyone, ends not just a hope, but just as a hopeless hope, as a meaningless hope to continue to exist, continue to suffer in the same kind of life, but and have fruitless hope. So we find how simplicity, how innocent belief in belief in religion, in society actually lead us to be corrupted. So Blake is very subtly satirizing the society and also his belief in Christianity and others believe in Christianity, not only the children's belief, because they are children, they would, of course, they are expected to believe in everything, not just in religion. But we as adults, how should we accept this kind of brutality to the children? All the children of art have by right, birthright, have the right to enjoy life, to enjoy the green landscape, to enjoy the free air, to enjoy food and basic accommodations. But millions of children, we know the condition, not, not only ha condition had not improved yet, even in 21st century, millions of children are going without food, shelter, basic nutrition. They are living a miserable life as these innocent sweepers. They are innocent. Every child should have the basic right, birth right to this the resources of art. We can't deny the resources due to the social custom, due to the class barrier, due to the financial barriers. Nothing should prevent them from enjoying the environment, the art, the beautiful art that the God has sent them, if we truly believe in religion. So this is the mystic vision, the profound vision Blake had for all the children of art. But look what we have done. Now come back to the text. So Tom Awick, the dream ends. And we rose in the dark. We means all the chimney sweeper. And got with our bags and our bruises to work. Notice how the dream ends and the hope ends. And they come back to the reality. So the poem starts with reality, dark, gloomy reality. And ends with dark, gloomy reality. And in the meanwhile, in the middle structure, we just have a little hope little hope through the dream that Tom had. In the morning, just after the dream, they had to, in the dark morning, dark wintry morning, they had to go out. They had to go out with their brushes, with their bags, with their burdens. Through the morning, although the morning was cold, Tom was happy and warm. Why Tom was happy and warm? Of course, because of the dream he has, because the angel has advised him to be happy and warm, to be a good boy. So, the religion teaches us to accept the 
corrupted condition to accept the diseased condition or miserable condition we are in to be satisfied with us. So this is how Blake criticizes the conventional Christianity, the conventional Christian authority and institution. In many of his poems, you will find that Blake has criticized the Christian authority, the Christian, Christian religion as an institution. It could be applied to all the religion of the world, all the religious institution, religion as institution should be rejected, but religion as a deeper faith should be welcomed, invited. That kind of profound vision Blake had in his life and that was expressed in many of his uh, uh, painting, many of his painting of the society, of the gods like Eurizen, uh, creative forces like Eurizen. Eurizen actually refers to the, uh, the rational forces. So come back to the text and we are almost at the end of the text. So though the morning was cold, Tom was happy and warm. Why he was happy? Because of the dream, because of the assurance, because of the advice given to him by the angel. So if all do their duty, they need not fear harm. So what kind of harm? They are in an illusion. The children are in an illusion that they would not be harmed. This is strange. They are actually leading a miserable life. But the institution is the institutional religion teaches them to be dutiful to be dutiful to what to be dutiful to the religion to dutiful their miserable life and they could be saved how they could be saved it was the duty of the faith within us to relieve us to release us from the miserable condition but no we find that religion teaches them to continue within the confinement, within the black coffins. So this is text is very ironic and in the ironic in the sense that it provides the hope but shatters the hope at the end. Okay. So this is how uh, we should uh, interpret the text in detail. Of course, you have, you must have your own interpretation. Interpretation is not actually fixed. Interpretation is open and you should try to interpret this text in your own way by applying different uh, context, by applying different imagination. But as I say in most of my lectures that whatever interpretations you have, you must provide evidence from the text. Don't go further from the text. If you go further from the text, your opinions could be abstract, become abstract and would not be related to the text. So don't do that. I would not suggest to do that. Of course, you are open to every sort of opinion and interpretation, but of course related and based to this text that we have discussed. Now, before I finish my lecture, uh, as I do, I have certain topics uh, and suggestions and reference to you to give you and you can comment, you can ask questions and opinion in the commentary box. Now, these are the suggested topics and themes for you to ponder on like Blake's vision of society, religion and art, Blake's poetic techniques that his use of assonance, his use of rhymes, his use of simple uh, simple words, his use of metaphors and symbols. And of course, Blake as a romanticism and neoclassical, neoclassical satire. Why? Because uh, we find the satiric element in Blake. Blake is not just a romantic poet. We find uh, ironically and paradoxically quite satirical neoclassical satirical element social element in this text also that is quite evident as far as this text is concerned now you could also go and explore these links these books uh, for further reference and uh, have your own interpretation of the text thank you for being patient and uh, careful about listening this text uh, listening my interpretation of this text okay so Thanks to all of you. Goodbye.